Okay, so as I said in class, I'm going to do problem 17 2A, that is on page 822 of um, your book, which should be the 13th edition, okay? So if you don't have the 13th edition of this book, you should get it. It's your responsibility to get the book, okay? So anyways, this is, um, I, I just wanted to do this one because as you can see, it has a little bit of the job orders. These are the numbers behind the scenes. Over here you have the general ledger, which are the regular accounting, financial accounting entries. And over here you have the various jobs which um, compose the numbers that will flow into factory overhead and work in process and, and finish goods inventory. The, these are the um, main accounts, the master accounts, and each, but behind each account you will have subtotals that are tied to each job. Okay, so let's start with, with this exercise one by one, and um, you'll see what I mean. Uh, problem 17, 2A, Chapter 17, a page 822 says, Tybee Industries uses a job order cost system. The following data summarizes the operations related to the production for January 2016, the first month, the first month of operations, okay? So this is the first month of operation, so all this is zero. It says material purchase on account was $29,800. So that's just a regular financial accounting entry. Material purchase on account, $29,800. Okay? You're going to debit materials because materials is an asset. And so your assets are going to increase. And over here, I already wrote the wrong account. It should not say um, work in process. It should say accounts payable. Accounts payable, right? Because you purchased that on account. And that's just a regular, um, a regular financial accounting entry. There's nothing managerial about that. Um, so B, materials requisitioned and factory labor used, okay? So they're giving us this chart here. This is all the material that was requisitioned and, um, and materials are in this column and this is the factory labor, right? So since this is the factory labor, we know that this labor is gonna go ahead and go into work and process, right? And we know that this direct materials um, that were requisitioned will also go into work and process. Now notice down here how they say general factory. This is a clue. What this is telling me is that this is going to go temporarily into factory overhead, right? These will go straight into work and process. This will go into factory overhead and then eventually we're going to shift it from factory overhead to work and process as we apply it. Okay? So, the correct accounting entry would be like this. The 49,780 that goes straight into work in process is the summation of this over here, right? So if we take, if we auto sum this column, excluding this two down here, and we auto sum this column here, sorry, And then we sum these two. That gives you 49,780. This is the whole, that portion will go straight into work and process. This portion here, for now, we're going to put into factory overhead. See, because it was general factory, factory use. It wasn't tied directly to any job. So we're going to put it into factory overhead for now, and eventually you're going to see how eventually we'll start allocating the factory overhead to each job, because each job has to absorb some of that factory overhead, right? So the portion that belongs to direct materials is this column here, direct materials 2710. If we add that up, um, we take we make the full addition there. You'll see that that's 2710. 
indirect labor is 27,950, okay? So from the direct labor, we, um, we are going to book that into wages payable because we not have not paid it yet. Uh, from the direct materials, we take it from direct materials, right? We're going to take it out, direct materials, that comes out. And we're going to put that portion over in work in process, right? It's, it's linked, it's added up here, but I'll just put that portion here. I'll just put it separately for now. Uh, wages payable, 27 950 so that is a liability right we're going to have wages payable 27950 and then um this wages payable sorry it's not it's not um the full it's not the full amount i should not i should not um do it like this uh these are the amounts that go there, right? 27, 25, 9, 30, and 23, 850, because a portion of this goes into factory overhead. So work in process 49,780, right? Which is this portion here, which is this portion up here, right? 47,980. And then the 5,180 for now, we're going to go ahead and put it in factory overhead. Okay. So there's your GL right there for that one. C, factory overhead costs incurred on account. So this is just telling you a direct factory overhead cost that was incurred on account. So let's just say you received a bill for your, your, your bill for, um, for utilities and so forth related to the factory so you just simply put it straight into factory overhead and account payable is going to increase by five thousand five hundred okay as you can see we're starting to build up the factory overhead eventually that factory overhead will be allocated to the different jobs let me go ahead and erase this here Uh, so now we're on D. D, depreciation of machinery and equipment. Well, depreciation on machinery and equipment, that's just like any other um, uh, entry, right? You're going to put it in accumulated depreciation. Typically, you will put depreciation expense here, right? But this machinery and equipment is related to um, machinery and equipment in the factory. So for now, rather than expense it, we're going to capitalize it into factory overhead. Once we capitalize it and put it into factory overhead, it will, it will shift. It will be allocated to the jobs, which will go to work in process, which will go to finished goods. And finally, when you sell the finished goods, you will recognize it as cost of goods sold. Okay? Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. Okay, so this contra asset account will be tied to the account machinery and equipment, which should have a debit balance, and together you'll get your net book value. E, the factory overhead rate is fifty-four dollars per machine hour. Machine hours used were were this much so they're giving us the machine hours used and they're telling us that the factory overhead was 54 dollars so how much are we going to apply to factory overhead of the of the machine hours used well we know we use 228 hours and we have an estimate of Fifty-four dollars uh, per machine hours. That's the overhead rate. So two twenty-eight times fifty-four is going to be twelve thousand three hundred and twelve, right? So what are we doing now? We're applying. We're applying the factory overhead that we've accumulated 
and we're moving it over to the jobs, to the different jobs. So factory overhead now will be reduced. Why? Because we're shifting, we're shifting it over to work and process. And we're going to put this portion in work and process. Okay? So at least a small portion was put in work and process. So let's start building a more complete schedule here. We'll go over here. We'll start something like this, right? Hopefully I'll do this right and won't have to redo this whole video. Uh, let me do it down here. Paste, right? So we can... I don't think we're going to need this because that's factory overhead that will be allocated. So we're going to start doing a job schedule. So machine hours is here. Copy. Let's put machine hours. And the factory overhead that we allocated to, to these jobs are going to be based on It's going to be based on $54 per per hour used, right? So let's take this out. Okay. So all we have to do is take the 25 hours and multiply that times 54, right? Uh, sorry. Let's this equals. 25 hours times 54. And so that's going to be the factory overhead that I allocated to that job. We scroll down. These are the factory overhead costs that I allocated to each job, representing this amount. So now it's going from factory overhead to work in process. If we sum this up, you will see that the summation should be 12,312, okay? So this is, this is the work in process. This is, this is the details behind that. We are, we, are, we are showing the details behind that as part of the managerial accounting process so that we could help us make decision making and help us evaluate each job. Format cell. Let's go. Let's do this. 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 Okay. So, so far, so good. Um, so, we have factory overhead, we have direct materials, and we have direct labor, right? Why don't we go ahead and do a total column? That way, we have a complete sheet, spreadsheet of what each job has incurred. Let's do a total column over here. And then we'll sum these three, right? These are the three product costs that are always capitalized. You have factory overhead, direct materials, and direct labor. And these, so these are the total costs so far for each job. Now, we don't know which are finished and which are not, okay? So, but it's going to tell us right now on F. Jobs completed were 301, 302, 303, and 305, right? 301, 302, 303. And 305, it says. That's that's F of um of the problem. So these are the jobs completed. Okay. So if these are the jobs completed, once you complete a job, it goes from where? From work in process to finished goods, right? 
So we're going to take these jobs out of work in process, but we're going to take the totals and we're going to put it in finished goods. And let's just confirm that the addition is correct. This plus this plus this plus this should give me 34,804, right? So I'm taking 34,804 for these jobs which were completed and I'm shifting them over to finished goods. Let's take them out of work and process because they're finished, they're no longer work in process. And let's put them in finished goods inventory, okay? So now if I wanna have a, a schedule of all my finished jobs, these were all these were all the jobs. Now let's do one of only my finished jobs. I'll put them some, I'll put them up here. Hopefully it'll fit. Uh, did this fit? Yeah, okay. And then what I'll do is I'll delete that. I'll delete that because those aren't finished. Let's just move this up here. And I can make this a total down here. Right, total finished jobs. So these are my total finished jobs, 34,804. As you can see, that matches. These are all the jobs I had. And if I want, let me just go ahead of myself because I know they're going to, I believe they're going to ask this question. So let, let me just go ahead of myself and let's go ahead and show the jobs that are not finished yet. These are still stuck in work in process. Sorry, cancel. Okay, and the total here would be Let me format these cells. And the total there of unfinished jobs is 27,288. And we'll see how that comes into play later. So these are finished jobs and these are unfinished jobs from the total jobs. Let's read G. Jobs were shipped and customers were billed for the following jobs. Okay, so now we have another schedule. This schedule here is going to be of jobs that were that were sold, right? Jobs were shipped and customers were built. So job 301 Job 301 was was um let, let me mark it like this really quickly. Job 301 was was shipped. Uh, job 302 was shipped, and job 303 was shipped. Okay, so these these um these three 301, 302, and 303 were shipped. So these were sold. So we sold these. We know we sold a total of 22,294 in inventory. Okay? And so let me take them out of here. Right? Let me just take this out. These are gone. So the only one left in finished goods inventory is 12,510. The, the amount left in um, 
in um, working process is 27288 and the amount of cost of goods sold was 22294 right so we want to go ahead and we want to do that entry here so you can see cost of goods sold was 22294 you sold that so now you're going to recognize your expense okay finally you're recognizing the expense and that expense includes factory overhead it includes direct materials and direct labor, right? 22,294 is finally recognized. Your inventory is gonna go down. Finished inventory will go down by 22,294. So what, what happens here? What's gonna be my balance here? This minus this is 12,510. Does that match what, what I have? Um, what I have remaining in finished goods inventory. Remember, these were the completed jobs. Yes. So that's a that's a good match. Now let's do the account the other entry. This is to recognize the sales portion. And let me redo this just so that you can see that the number is correct. It says that we sold job 301 for 8250, right? 8250. And then job uh 302 was sold for 11200 And finally, job 303 was sold for 15000 And so that comes up to 34450 So we're going to recognize that as sales revenue. Sales revenue is 34450 And they said that it was through account. So we're going to have an account receivable. 34450 right so let's take a look at the work in process the work in process balance is going to be equal to this amount plus this amount right minus sorry minus this amount because that's what that's the amount that we um that we moved over to finished goods inventory right 27 288 if we look over here the amount that we still have in work in process is 27288 so this is the details behind um behind the gl okay let me um maybe i should uh maybe i should name these to make this a lot easier so this will be the work in process right this here is going to be This here is going to be finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory. And this here is going to be uh, what what is this? You see I already lost track. This is what we sold. Was this what we sold? Oh yeah. This is what we sold. So that's going to be Your cost of goods sold, right? Cost of cost of goods sold. Okay. So the whole idea and the reason I wanted to present this is so that you can see how um, this is really the managerial accounting area here. All this. This here is regular financial accounting. All this is regular normal financial accounting. But what a managerial accountant and what a managerial accounting system does is it shows the details behind what you do by job so that you can make comparisons. So the details behind the finished good inventory, we know that it's only one job, job 305 right there. The details behind cost of goods sold is composed of three jobs. Uh, and you can see the details there, cost of goods sold, that ties there. And the details of work in process is job 304 and 306. As you can see, it ties over here. 
Um, furthermore, you can then compare each job if you want to. Um, of course, they, they should be in the same stage if you want to compare them. These are completed stage, right, because we sold them. So now we can compare these to see um, to see how they compare. Um, as you can see, product costs that are capitalized and then sold through, through cost of goods sold are are our um, factory overhead, direct materials, and direct labor. So I wanted to do this um, exercise just so that you could understand. The one we did in class just showed this part, and this is pretty much financial accounting. But this is the managerial accounting component that makes managerial accounting so important. And it makes. I hope this makes it clear how all these jobs are attached and linked to these accounts. Okay, these accounts represent the total, but the details can be always found behind a schedule sh showing each job. Okay, hope this was helpful. Thank you.